Okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Lukas Bohr. I'm a CTO and partner at TrustSoft. I'm also AWS Solutions Architect, working with AWS for more than six years, uh, helping clients like Škoda Auto or Monet Money Bank to migrate to AWS. Recently, we were working on some feasibility study for Slovakian power plant, which was a quite challenging project. And uh, before that, I was a Linux sysadmin, uh, like well, 15 years or something like that. Uh, working with high available infrastructure, helping also customers to deliver emails in very large scale and so on, like a couple million emails per day uh, to be delivered. That's quite a challenging thing, how to con convince Postfix to do things like that. Uh, in Trustsoft, we are AWS partner. Uh, we are very happy for the partnership with AWS because it's helping us a lot and I believe that we bring some value to AWS as well. Uh, working with clients like uh, Mall or Nova or Economia and so on. And uh, we, with all the clients we are working, we are discussing their governance and security. And uh, often the clients uh, don't even think about the governance and security. And especially it's a problem with larger customers who started with AWS somehow. They configured the AWS, AWS environment. and. Uh, started to work out for them and they brought new teams on uh, through new projects and suddenly they had for example multiple environments multiple accounts and uh, they see uh, an issue with managing all these accounts and that's why uh, we should start thinking about some lending zone but uh, we should actually start thinking about lending zone when we are starting with aws like we all know like when we are building a house we should think about how to build it uh, properly from the starting. Not like starting with the roof, but we should start with the bottom of the house. And that's uh, what, what uh, needs to be done with AWS as well. Uh, just like a funny, one funny story uh, with one of, the, one of our customers, they uh, started with uh, AWS, they liked it a lot, then they had a big mess on their lending zone, a big, big mess with uh, multiple accounts, they didn't know how to handle it, then they decided to go with Azure because Microsoft did it for them. Microsoft configured the lending zone for them. So uh, it's not a way to go, but uh, definitely one of the ways. And you've also probably seen customers who thought about cloud, like, okay, let's take it as a two and other data centers. One availability zone is one data center, second availability zone is a second data center, like failover data center. And uh, they don't think about the governments, about the security, about networking, and suddenly they find out they don't have enough IPs for the third availability zone. And that's a big, big problem in the end because they didn't think about it uh, properly in the beginning. And they didn't think about it in the dynamic way of thinking how you should think about cloud. So uh, today's agenda, which I'd like to dis uh, discuss with you or tell you, uh, it's a uh, let's see what lending zone is, what it can bring you, uh, how we can uh, implement it using a service called AWS Control Tower. Uh, then we discuss uh, how to take uh, multiple accounts and how to connect them, how to segment them, how to uh, govern them. Uh, also, we will talk a little bit about security, how to handle the security from top to the bottom in all our environment. And then I have a demo on how to set up uh, AWS Control Tower uh, for your organization. So uh, let's start with the landing zone. Uh, so what do we all expect from AWS? We want to build, we want to build easy. We don't want to manage services. Like I want database, I get managed database. I want to be fast. I want to prototype, test new services uh, and so on. And of course, I want to be secure. Uh, I can I get all these things, but uh, I still need to achieve some things before I can start doing things like that. So um, probably my security department within the company will tell me, hey, you need to be compliant with some security standard. So it's an important thing to ask them, hey, do we need to be PCI DSS or HIPAA compliant or uh, do we need to be audited from time to time? Do we need to have all our... Uh, resources encrypted, for example. So uh, that's one thing which we need to find out. 
Second thing is that we need to have our infrastructure scalable. Uh, we need to build for the future. So let's imagine some other teams come, some other projects come. Uh, we never know what our business wants. You know, they, they, you never know like if they will come up with some next unicorn and the infrastructure should be ready for that. And of course, we should keep it simple, very, very simple for everybody because uh, developers don't want to think about like, um, if I come with a new product, how to do logging, how to do security, do I need to be compliant and so on. If I have this prepared for me, it's much easier to start with new projects, with new prototyping and so on. And also uh, you all want to have some kind of sandbox accounts where you want to test out things. And uh, it's super easy to uh, start a new account if you have it uh, set up by uh, Control Tower because it also follows some uh, some standards, your company standards. So what is the lending zone? Uh, lending zone is uh, AWS standard for managing multi-account environment, uh, which is uh, based on um, AWS best practices, tested by thousands of, or more than thousands of companies. And uh, it's a good place where you can start your new project. It's a place which is pre-configured you, for you. It's a place which is pre-configured for your, for your teams. And you can start with experiments, with new products, new environments. And you don't th need to think if uh, I was working with uh, AWS config, did I set it right? Uh, did I set up CloudTrail logs? And so on. This is all set up for you. Um, so. Why not to start with one AWS account? Why not one account is enough, for example? Uh, I've, I've seen a customer who segmented their production staging and, uh, and dev environment by VPCs. Okay, it might, works. it might work in the beginning. But at the same time, uh, the customer had problem that they brought another product to this environment. So in production environment, there were two products, in staging two products, in, in development two products separated by VPCs. They had one Terraform base for it. And one developer from one team messed up, broke other project of the other team. And uh, it's not only about the networking part, but you can also like break some S3 buckets, break some shared services, which are uh, still in one account. And therefore, it's kind of important to separate teams to different accounts, separate environments to different accounts, because accounts gives you the true, uh, true border between your teams. Um, nothing is connected between two accounts, but VPCs still have some shared services which are around them. So for multiple teams, if you want to conquer some isolation and also for the cost management, you can of course stack resources, but uh, you cannot take everything. It's hard to take uh, networking, for example. Uh, if you want to track like how much you are spending for some uh, network traffic, the easiest way to do is uh, just use a separated account and see like how much the account is spending for network traffic. So uh, AWS Control Tower is a service which combines multiple <coughs> other services which you've probably seen in AWS like organization, single sign-on, um, uh, SCP policies in, in organizations, and so on. And uh, it helps you to set up this lending zone based on these best practices uh, which AWS provides. Uh, of course, this has been around, this lending zone concept has been around for some time, and you were able to set it up manually, but it's quite a complex process. With Control Tower Service, it's much faster, it's easier, and uh, let's see what Control Tower, Control Tower gives us. So basically, Control Tower creates some basic account structure for me. I can define some security standards uh, for my whole organization or for some, sec uh, for some organization units, like I can have a different rules for development environments and for production environments and so on. Um, I can automatically create compliant accounts with my standards. Even my team can create the accounts for themselves and the accounts are automatically connected to my organization to single sign-on and also to my invoice. So I don't need to add any credit card details to create a new 
uh, account, for example. And uh, of course, I can then monitor uh, the, uh, the accounts, the dashboards, and get notifications that something is not, not right, not compliant, I get new accounts, and so on. Uh, so basically, uh, Control Tower creates three core accounts for me. Master account, where the Control Tower itself resides. Uh, log archive account and audit account. Uh, a single sign-on service. Uh, centralized cloud trail and config uh, logging to log archive. Uh, some set of guardrails. Um, also account factory, so you can create a new uh, AWS accounts easily. And also control tower dashboards, and uh, you can set up the monitoring and, and notifications based on that. So if I have multiple accounts, so how to structure them? So first, let's have a look on some basic structure of control tower. Uh, at first, you have this master account, which includes uh, AWS control tower itself. It includes organization service, uh, also includes single sign-on, um, service catalog, which can provide you with uh, creation of new uh, accounts. And also you have under the organizations, you, ha you have uh, organization units, which uh, includes other accounts, like log archive account, which is used for aggregating of the config logs, cloud trail logs, and so you can define like how long the logs should stay there. It's super important that if, for example, somebody hacks your dev account, and deletes everything within the account, the logs are still saved in a different account. So you know how, how it happened, how the hacker got into it. Also, there is an audit account. It's a special account which can be used for audit teams to check through your whole en environment, like uh, if you are compliant or not, and so on. And you also can get notifications there, and so on. Uh, some, some customers also uh, use uh, like a networking account which they include in these core accounts, uh, can be used for transit gateway, VPN uh, peering, and so on. And uh, then you have this section of provisioned accounts. And provisioned accounts are the accounts which you create, which you use for your teams, which you put under other organization units. Um, so uh, this is just an example how we could structure it. We have some core organization units, which includes the audit and log archive accounts. Then I have some sandbox organization unit, uh, which has some limited rights, and I can give rights uh, to all my developers to create sandbox accounts, to try something out, test it out. If, uh, if they are happy with it, then they just delete the whole account, or you can delete the whole account after some time, for example. Uh, then development account, which can have uh, multiple project accounts, uh, development organization is which can have multiple accounts uh, for different projects and so on with staging production. Of course, like uh, policies can be applied to any level of the organization unit and it applies to all uh, sub accounts within. So basically, if we apply something to root, uh, it applies to core sandbox development and all of them. I can also take another policy which I apply to staging and production separately. Let's have a look a little bit more at the security. So uh, I've been talking about guardrails. So what are guardrails? Uh, guardrails are pre-configured rules uh, which you can use in Control Tower, and they are in plain English. Uh, it means that uh, they are already pre-configured for you. They are very easy to understand what they are doing, and you just turn them on or turn them off. We have uh, two types of these uh, guardrails. They are preventive and they are detective. Preventive are based on service control policies, which you, which you already know from organizations. And uh, they are blocking or limiting some kind of functionality uh, for within those accounts which are under the organization units. Uh, detectives, uh, detective um, guardrails are the ones which are uh, notifying you, or you can set up some uh, remediation. So basically, uh, you can have a rule that uh, EBS volume needs to be encrypted. And you can be notified that it's not, or you can delete it if it's not encrypted, for example. And these are based on AWS config rules, which you probably know already. Just examples of the guardrails. 
uh, you need to have MFA for user, uh, uh, no public access to S3 buckets, uh, uh, block deletion of audit logs, and so on. And some of the guardrails are mandatory, which are already enabled on Control Tower. Some of the guardrails are strongly recommended. Some of the guardrails are just recommended. And based on that, you can enable it within your account and so on. Uh, it's important to also like separate it between the production and development environment. Something can be applied to a whole structure. Some things make sense only to apply, for example, to production. Uh, if you have a look at other key security services which AWS provides, uh, it's very easy to set them up within uh, this landing zone and use them across all the accounts which you have under. And uh, you can use, uh, for example, AWS Security Hub as a place where you can look through all your accounts which are below to check uh, how is your security doing. Uh, so CloudTrail, uh, it's logging every API call, every uh, click on the web console, every CLI um, call. Uh, AWS Config, also checking the whole organization uh, for uh, malicious configurations. So basically, you have some set of rules. If, uh, if you are not complying with the rules, alert for some change. You can uh, also add a Lambda, which will do the change for you. Security Hub is a place which uh, gives you a dashboard of how we are compliant with some security standard. For example, you can so that you want to be PCI DSS compliant, you enable these rules, it is gonna check it for you across the whole infrastructure. Uh, Guard Duty uh, it is analyzing network, DNS logs, cloud trail logs, and potentially finding some malicious activity. Uh, with Inspector, it's uh, focusing on application security, uh, it's comparing with some current CVEs, uh, with uh, known vulnerabilities, and so on. Uh, of your application and of course important uh, firewall manager which is centrally managing firewalls across AWS. Uh, AWS Security Hub is also one of the features which I which I mentioned. It's collecting data from the guard duty, it's collecting from inspector, IAM access and so on and basically giving you a single point of view where you can see uh, what's happening with your account and also if you are compliant or non-compliant. You can also integrate some other third-party uh, tools to it or uh, even like uh, uh, information from your on-premise environment. And then it looks something like this. It tells you if you are uh, compliant within the CIS AWS Foundation uh, benchmark. And it checks whether, for example, S3 bucket uh, is not publicly available. Uh, okay, it's compliant, some things are not compliant, and so on. So now, now have a look at, let's have a look at the demo, how we can uh, prepare the uh, landing zone with AWS Control Tower. So, once more, once again, right. Yeah. <coughs> nope. Place now. Place now, I think so, yeah. Okay, so basically, uh, this is of course AWS Management Console, but uh, we've prepared the new testing account using credit card and phone, uh, phone verification and with a testing email address. Uh, and important part, which we can have a, have a look first, is definitely billing. We should set up some billing alerts when we start with AWS account. So it's kind of, that's always important uh, to do something like that. And this is like a pre-recorded video. So sometimes we might wait a little bit, but the internet connectivity here is kind of slow. And I hope the video is actually playing or we are stuck at the same page. <laughs> um, I think this not sure if it's playing.
Okay. So that's something which we could, which we should always do with a new account, create a budget. Uh, of course, because they, this is a newly created account, the budget explorer is still not active, uh, but we can still set up a budget based on standard spend within the account. After 24 uh, after when, we, when we enable it, after 24 hours, it will become active. Uh, so we're not going to wait 24 hours for that. And so when we are creating the, the budget, uh, for for the infrastructure, um, I can set up its its monthly budget, recurring every month, starting September. And uh, let's say we want to start with one hundred dollars. Uh, other things we don't we don't need to set up, and we forget to set up the name of the budget, which is important. So let's set it up. Yeah. Uh, we can add an alert because like just the budget is not enough. So uh, let's set it for 80%. So we get notified when we reach the 80% of the budgeted amount, which is going to be $80 uh, and send email alert. We can also use SNS alert or chatbot alerts. So, so we can send it, for example, to Slack. And also just one alert is sometimes not enough. Uh, so let's add another one for 100 and one uh, with the same email, and let's add another alert with 1,000% uh, of the budgeted amount in case something goes really, really wrong. And we know it very, very soon. So uh, we get three alerts, uh, let's set it up. So this is first thing which we should always do when we create a new, new account. Uh, I always tell it uh, to, to customers and sometimes they are surprised that even like S3 bucket can be quite expensive uh, if they do something wrong. Uh, so let's start with the control tower. We search for uh, control tower service and uh, let's have a look in, let's, let's set it up in the correct uh, region. Uh, most of us is in Europe, so let's, let's use Frankfurt. Some of the customers are using Ireland as well. Um, let's, let's use it in, in Frankfurt and set up the uh, landing zone using Control Tower. Uh, this is our main region where we set it up. We can also add some other regions which we want to be managed by Control Tower. Uh, you can change it later on as well. Uh, let's add the Ireland here. So we have two of them. It also it gives us the possibility to set up a new account somewhere else. Uh, we can change the organization unit names, which are prepared for us. Uh, it can be security, it can be core. Uh, we can also have some additional organization units like sandbox. Uh, it, then it asks us for uh, other accounts, and other accounts needs to have also email addresses. So. Uh, we need to add an email address for a log archive account and email address for audit account. Of course, this can be an alias to still the same uh, email address, or you can use plus the email address. Keep it simple. There's a new feature you can you can add KMS encryption as well. And uh, just some recap: uh, what it's going to create, and you you add permissions to. AWS Control Tower and set it up. Uh, the right also reason why it's pre-recorded is that this is going to take you 30 to 60 minutes and we don't want to wait. So this is what you will see. It's going to create two organization units, three shared accounts, uh, cloud directory with single sign-on and 20 preventive guardrails by default. So uh, Let's rewind the time and refresh, and we should have the control tower set up. Okay. So this is our dashboard. Here are some recommended actions what you should have a look at, but this is the basic summary. We have these two organization units. 
the core, the sandbox, three accounts, guardrails already preset, uh, not yet any non compliant resources, which is good. This is the list of accounts, uh, and also I have some guardrails which are uh, prepared on or enabled. Uh, I can separately have a look at, uh, at the accounts, in which organization unit they are, uh, which state they are, if they are being prepared or they are done. Um, we can add a new organization unit, which could be some development organization unit. For example, where we will add a new uh, AWS account using Account Factory. So you can see it's registering a new organization unit. Basically, it's calling AWS organizations and creating it. But uh, if, you, if you create a new organization unit directly in organizations, it needs to be also added here later on. So it's better to do everything from control tower. Uh, within the guardrails, you you see you can see that you have some mandatory guardrails, some uh, elected guardrails, uh, and of course uh, some do the prevention, some do the detection, and this is what I meant by the plain English. It just tells you what it does, and it's uh, super easy to enable them. And uh, let's find the uh, EBS. Uh, so basically, we want to see uh, or detect whether uh, the encryption is enabled or not. So it's using AWS config for that. And it's strongly recommended uh, to enable something like this. And we will enable it in organization unit. Let's select the dev environment. You can see it's a just a checkbox. Uh, it's not a checkbox. It's uh, yeah. You can choose just one because you can always apply uh, the guardrail to only one organization unit at the time. And this is actually very time consuming when you are adding more and more. And we all hope to have automation or API uh, done by AWS because it's pretty hard to enable all the guardrails that you want. Uh, yeah, um, we are now in the account factory, and you can you can choose how you want to configure the network for the new uh, accounts, whether uh, which IP range you want, if you, they want to be enabled uh, with internet access, and, and so on. Uh, when we have a look at users and access, uh, you can see that the single sign-on has been created for us with some portal URL, and uh, we can. Uh, Let's copy it for the future use, and we can also have a look at the configuration of uh, the single sign-on itself, which will take you to AWS single sign-on service. So you can see control tower is wrapper of the, all these services. So uh, within within the users, you can see that there has been one administrative user created for us. You can add some additional users. Also, add them into the groups, which some of the groups are already prepared for us. And also, uh, you can allow access to different accounts for different users and permission sets, which is something like roles in IAM. Uh, if we go to a single sign on console, let's, let's paste. then you get to this type of a login. Log uh, of course, we need to uh, set up a password. So uh, when we created the new control tower, uh, it also sent us uh, an email with, uh, uh, which is asking for uh, activation of this uh, admin user. And uh, so basically, we can accept the invitation and set up the password for the user. Not just copy paste some strong password. And we can we can already sign in with this 
with this admin user. And this is pretty much the point where we should stop using root, uh, root user, which we use for set up the control tower, and start using this uh, admin user for all everything we do. And you can see that in single sign-in console, you can log into it, all these three accounts which we have, and you can also choose uh, how we want to log in and which uh, which role you want to use. So we are back in the management console as AWS administrator. Uh, so we have full rights to everything, and uh, we can continue with uh, set it, setting up the control tower. So we can create a new account. Uh, of course, for the account, we also need a new email address. We need to call it somehow. Yeah, no space allowed. And And we need to choose in which an, uh, organization unit we want to enroll this account. There is also uh, uh, in the service catalog you can also do the same thing uh, because account number is basically calling a service catalog for that, which can give you a better UI for your developers to, to create new things within AWS. Like if you want to. Uh, if you want to give them the access to create the sandbox accounts for them, it's, it gets a better UI and you can limit the functionality, of course, what they can do. So uh, you can also use the service catalog to create new accounts in here or use service catalog for other features as well. And it has the same options which cost the control tower. And so we can have a look at the accounts and it's uh, it's deploying the new account for us. And it's already following the guard, it's already including the guardrails which we set up. So all the EBS volumes need to be encrypted. If they are not, we get a notification. You can see there were three uh, the detected guardrails already enabled. And it takes some time before you get the information because AWS config is running in if I default every 15 minutes, gathering the information from the account, then it gets sent to this master account and analyzed. You can already, it's also got you, this new account was added to single sign on as well. You can easily log in to it, and it's, if you have multiple accounts, it's definitely much easier than uh, switching with roles.